All right. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm giving it one more second for YouTube to catch up to us, and then we'll get started. I think we're ready. I should start this one this process one minute before we actually go live. That would be smarter. Um, anyway, I'm going to spotlight Kristen, but I'm also going to share my screen and um, just tell some tell people some stuff. Um, I'm going to say welcome to the. This is what we call it, Kristen. We believe in comics. I hope it seems okay. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> also believe in comics. Yeah, <laughs> the, this is We Believe in Comics, the Friday night workshops at the Sequential Artist Workshop. Let's see, who are we? We're uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We have courses for comics. Um, you can find us at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, here's some things coming up, in fact. Um, next week in this spot, Dave Lasky is going to do a workshop, Draw Like a Filmmaker. Meanwhile, we have some courses coming up in 2023. Leela Corman's teaching a, a month-long workshop. Josh Bayer's teaching a month-long workshop. Georgia Weber is teaching ongoing Saturday morning workshops. And we're uh, campaigning for sustaining member uh, donations. I'll talk more about that maybe in the chat or something. Uh, share what you do tonight on social media, hashtag Friday Night Comics. You can tag us at Comics Workshop, and I'll put Kristen's uh, uh, URL tag. What is it? Handle? I don't know. In the chat. Um, you can also join us at members.sawcomics.org, um, and we survive from tuitions and donations. So thanks to everybody who donated um, today or to any of the workshops, and um, it really helps keep these free. It helps, helps keep us doing all the many things we've done. This is a quick... I got to change this out because it's old, but we donate a lot. We give a lot of scholarships out. We've done a lot of things to help get comics out there and get people telling their stories. So um, your donations help that. Um, yay, like those people. Um, please know inappropriate speech or imagery. You know, Susan, I was thinking we had a troll last week, but the troll kept it at PG-13. Like it was like, it, you know, <laughs> I, uh, it, was it was destructive and interruptive and hateful maybe yeah hateful but it was pg-13 anyway so um <laughs> that's also a segue to say that everybody is muted and as we go on sharing towards the end we'll we'll po pick that little button that says act on mute and you have to do that manually so anyway enjoy we're here with kristen radke oh my god i'm so excited um i'm gonna stop sharing and hand it over to kristen but i just really want to say two real fast things which is that kristen's created these workshops and when um, they were deciding to stop them. That's when my heart broke and I said, you got to do let us do them. And so I, so I want to thank Kristen for inventing these things. But more importantly, you made two of my favorite graphic novels ever. And I don't, hey. you're the only person I can say that made two of my favorite <laughs> graphic novels ever. God, I'm so happy you're here. Um, Thanks. And I'm just, so now I'm going to like blink out and, and I'll just be in the chat and you can do whatever you want to do. Is that good? Uh, yeah, that sounds great. And should I mention uh, your cutoff time of eight fifteen? That yeah, I told I told uh, Tom that my pita sandwich is arriving at eight fifteen. So, but I will my if anyone wants to share past eight fifteen, I will happily uh, microwave it, re-microwave it when it's done. <laughs> um, anyway, hi everybody, it's so great to see you here. Like Tom mentioned, I started Friday Night Comics when I was working at the Believer Magazine. Um, we had the first one the week of lockdown in 2020 and in March, 2020, it uh, was um, make your quarantine with Malika Garib and a thousand people came. And I realized that we were, there was this thing here. I thought it was just going to be this single event. And then we just kept it going. And um, when I left the believer, I was heartbroken to leave these workshops behind. And then so grateful to Tom and Leela and everyone at saw for picking them up again, because it's like, probably my that my most favorite thing I've ever gotten to be a part of. So I'm so glad you guys are all here. Okay, so my most recent book was called CQ, A Journey Through American Loneliness. Um, and right now I'm working on a graphic nonfiction book about gossip. And so I've been thinking a lot about secrets, which is what we're gonna talk about right about draw about tonight. 
Um, secrets are complicated, obviously. Secrets can be very mean, secrets can be terrible, but I also think secrets can be great. Like secrets are how we bond with each other. It's how we say, I trust you, I'm gonna share this thing with you. Um, and I especially love to hear other people's secrets because it's like you've been like anointed or picked and you feel really special and it's kind of this great thrilling feeling. So tonight we're gonna combine two of my favorite things, secrets, and one of my favorite things about making nonfiction comics, which is getting to draw diagrams. Especially when I have the chance to diagram things that don't you don't really make sense. Like there's nothing mathematical or scientific about the diagram, and you're getting to break something down in a way you don't normally get to break it down. Um, I think it, sometimes it's a really good way to break down a big idea, like maybe when like a sequential panel or something isn't working. It gives you a chance to like step back and look at a subject or an event, I think, in a different way. So let's get started. So for to begin, the first thing I want you all to do is I'm going to screen share for this um, for a second. Share screen. Okay. So for this first part, this is just like really rough just to get us comfortable. Um, we're going to have a chance to redraw all these later. So basically what I want you all to do is just pick a chart or a diagram, like maybe, I never know the difference between diagrams and charts. We can use the wrong vocabulary here, it's fine. So like maybe you wanna do a Venn diagram, maybe you wanna do a timeline. And right now we're just drawing these, we're not labeling them. We're not thinking about what we're gonna put in them. Maybe you wanna draw a map. And again, these can be really sloppy and ugly just like I'm doing now. Maybe we wanna draw a bar chart, but we don't really know what that info is gonna be. That's okay. We're just getting the shapes down. You can draw multiple like I'm doing. You can, you can put all of your time into doing one. We'll do this for about you know a minute, something like that. Maybe what other kinds of charts are there? We could do this thing, a line graph, right? Is that what that's called? Um, what other kinds of charts are there? We could do pie oh, chart. we could pie chart, an excellent chart. <laughs> okay, maybe we want to do like we could do something like the anatomy. Like maybe you're going to label a body in a way you wouldn't normally label a body. Mm. So you could draw a blobby person like that. You could draw. Um, a solar system or you know the planets don't even have to be real mm. it could be like what about a constellation anything and then maybe what you're drawing it maybe the diagram is you're just going to label these things i love using arrows i use arrows constantly um in, the, in my drawings because i think it's a way to make like really funny little asides or like add context like maybe i want to talk about I write about history a lot, but it's like, I don't always want to be like in 1876, we did the, you know, whatever, but you can just do a sidebar and be like, isn't this a weird fact of this thing that happened in 1876? And so it's kind of a way to add more context without really interrupting the story. So take like another 30 seconds to just finish drawing a couple of charts. Constellation would be a kind of chart, right? Constellation. I once had a student who said that um, in a class called Graphic Narratives, who said that um, a constellation was a graphic narrative, mm -hmm. that, which is such a beautiful thing I'd never thought of before. But like use, you know, you can really be super flexible here. Maybe you wanna, maybe a diagram for you is like, okay, like my LaCroix. Like if I draw my LaCroix and then maybe I wanna like, section it off in certain ways. Like you could really diagram anything. So just feel free to just put down anything that kind of comes to you. Take a couple more seconds. Jackie says a, a you are here diagram. Yeah, that's a good a you are A you are here diagram is a great idea. I'm going to put that on the, the little Koi can. <laughs> okay, so I drew something earlier since I was just drawing those examples. Whenever I lead a workshop, I'm kind of like, this is how it is when you 
take it like, or when you see like a cooking class and someone's like six hours ago, you will have begun braising your turkey or whatever. And then like <laughs> a, suddenly I like a completed thing sounds out of the um, oven. So that's what I did here. I totally cheated and you don't have to have something that's polished, but basically I drew this quick uh, drawing of a brain and what I'm going to, so basically for this next part, we're going to label our diagram. We can pick any of the diagrams we made and we're gonna label them that have somehow to do something to do with a secret. So you can talk about a specific secret you have or a specific secret that's been told to you or maybe like how sick secrets make you feel or something about secrets in general. Maybe this becomes like a map of a secret or a timeline of a secret or the anatomy of a secret. So like, I'm going to label this, is if this is my brain, I'm gonna label like the secrets that I, that occupy my brain. So like here I would say, and I'm just gonna draw this really quickly cause we're gonna redraw basically right now we're making like a sketch basically for what we're gonna redraw um, when we have 10 minutes next. So I'm gonna say like, um, embarrassing memories to me feel kind of like secrets because I'm not gonna tell them at dinner or like, best friends secrets or like stuff I said I wasn't going to eat but did <laughs> or um really mean thoughts about people I love or um, how I felt left out when I didn't know a secret. So take, let's take like five minutes and just label one of your charts. If you are done with your labeling, um, you can begin to do some more sketching. Basically in the next, after this next step, we're gonna take that diagram and we're gonna write into it more. We're gonna draw into it more. Are there things maybe in the next step that you wanna draw that you've labeled, things like that. It'll give you a chance to redraw it, but I just wanna let you know where we're going so you can kind of think through how you wanna use your five minutes now. And if you don't like where you're going with it, just start again. Cool, thanks. Kristen, do you have a moment to um, share your first screen if it's still- I do, available, yes. The the charts and diagrams? Yes, so- the Latecomers are, are asking. Yeah, I will, uh, I'll just leave that up for a minute. So basically we talked about how anything can really be a diagram. So you're gonna kind of draw, think about like a pie chart, a bar chart, any really normal diagram that you've seen. Have you ever seen like the approval matrix in New York Magazine where it's just like you put things on a chart as in order of how you like them. A timeline, it can really be anything. A map, a di like any kind of um, schematic, a blueprint. We didn't say blueprint yet, but a blueprint would be a great one. Would you say that when you do when you're doing part two to make it about the secrets you yourself keep? I think you can. I I really want to keep the broad open the prompt open ended. So basically, like what comes to mind for you when you think about secrets? Like, mm -hmm. do you have a positive reaction? Do you have a negative reaction? Does it, do you think about a moment in childhood, like when you told something you weren't supposed to tell, or was there like some giddy happy memory of you on the playground or like with your brother or something like that, or like kind of like interrogate those feelings and see what comes up for you. And I, sometimes I feel like the first sort of like flush of memory you have is the one you should just run with. And then if that's, if that maybe as you're drawing or writing that brings up something else for you and you wanna shift or maybe that first idea is the best idea. I like to just kind of, especially when you're we're working with like a prompt, I think the most, in general, I think the most important thing about making comics is just that you're making them. So it's really about like, 
attack that, you know, the first thought you have, anything you feel excited about, just put that on the page. So you could write about, you could kind of like wax poetic about secrets generally, or you could talk about something really specific. And we're gonna redraw these. Exactly. So we're right now, we're just like making a bunch of notes. We're, um, we're maybe crossing out the diagrams we don't want to use. We're maybe um, redraw, you know, starting to to think about areas we want to improve in the next step. We'll stay at the stage for about two more minutes. People are asking if you could show your screen again, Kristen, with the sample. Yes, charts. of course, of course. I can just keep that up. So these are like, these are just like dumb samples that I drew at the beginning. Like they can be anything. Like here, why don't I just keep drawing graphs while we're doing this? Make my artboard bigger. I love that you're working in Illustrator, Kristen. That's basically the only place I know how to work. It's not necessarily <laughs> on purpose. I'm gonna get my, my ruler because I don't know how to use digital ruler. So I have this little ruler that I use to make straight lines. How do you, where do you, where do you work when you work digitally, Tom? You know what? I bought, I bought an iPad to use Procreate and then I tried it. And then all I use it now is to uh, yeah. practice the piano. <laughs> and and I went right back to regular <laughs> old ink. And like on on my on my lap on the floor, I draw in ink, and it's just I don't know. I haven't. It's kind of whatever it. works. Yeah, I think. Wait, so you're drawing with that little plastic ruler on your screen? Yeah. So oh, I have this here. I'll share. I'll show my amazing. Yeah. I'll show my setup if I get disconnected here. So here. Oh. So this is the um, Wacom's Antique tablet. It's um, extra huge because my work paid for it. But if I previously had a much smaller one, this one is pretty expensive. But it's a great benefit of um, working in design in your day job. <laughs> okay, that is your timer. So now we're going to move on to step three. This is our longest step. We're going to take a full 10 minutes here before we go into sharing. And here, I just want you to really dig into whatever you started diagramming. And maybe you want to write more. Maybe you want to have, are there things you want to caption? Are there maybe, if you, if you have just one quick sentence, is there maybe something in the parentheses that you want to write into that you want to give more context about? Does it, is this diagram a part of a larger story? Do you want to draw maybe another, if you're thinking about this in sequentials, like let's say you wanted to make three panels, would it be three different diagrams? Would those three together tell a story? You don't have to stay in diagrams. You can start drawing characters. You can start drawing more traditional scenes. That's totally fine too. But just think about how you want to fill things out. You can either keep drawing on the, on the sketches that you were drawing, or you can start fresh on the new page. Okay. Can we watch you draw? Are you going to do it? I can try. I can try to let you watch me draw. Thanks. It makes me very stressed out. I don't mean to do that. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's so pleasing to watch anybody draw. I, I know I, it's really exciting. Yeah. Here I will. Um. I did this rough portrait sketch earlier, which maybe I'll draw over so that I won't be too nervous. I like that idea that six okay. hours later. So my out. initial plan was to was to my initial plan was to draw a brain and then to draw my my face around it. But I've put all of my this writing on one layer. And I need to get rid of it because I use a font for my handwriting because it takes me so 
long to write a word that looks like it was written by not a serial killer that I had to ultimately make a font out of my handwriting. Let me get rid of all that. And then actually maybe the next part is I'll try not to stop talking so much so you guys can focus on what you're drawing, but I have to pick my palette. And usually the first thing I do to look at to pick a palette is to go to like a color generator website and just click through until I see something that is exciting to me. So this is called, this is cool, uh, C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O. And I just click through until I find something that I like. Kind of like this Pepto-Bismol pink. Maybe I'll make my brain that color. <laughs> I would be curious to see in the chat how other people pick their palettes. Also, I just got to notice that my internet connection is unstable. So if I get all choppy, I'm very sorry. Seems okay so far. Okay, great. Palette is one of those words I'm never going to learn how to spell. Um, and you know what? We're only seeing your, uh, weirdly, we're seeing your, um, it's so interesting. I can see you drawing the outline of a brain, but all we see is the palette. Oh, it's still the window. It's still the window. <laughs> I didn't share my. Yeah. But the cursor yeah. was clearly drawing a brain shape. It was really great. <laughs> I was just making my Pepto brain. But I think it's a little too pink, so I'm going to start adjusting. Maybe that's a little better. And then I like to do, I, um, I never know how shadows work. I remember one time I, I did an event with uh, Gabrielle Bell, and I was just being like, I never know how to make shadows that look real. And she was like, who cares? It's just about the feeling. And I always think about that when I'm worried that something doesn't look realistic. I think like one of the things that I worked on getting away from. When I first started drawing, I wanted to prove that like I knew how to draw something that looked like something. So I couldn't mm -hmm. stop drawing things really realistically. And it took me a long time. Like even this face now, when I trace over this previous drawing of a face I made, you know, that I probably spent 40 minutes on this afternoon, I'm gonna try to do it faster and messier. Gabrielle Bell will put a shadow anywhere. I love it. She'll put it on the front of something and on the back. What's that? I said Gabrielle Bell will put a shadow anywhere. She'll put it on the front, on she the back. She totally does. Yeah. I think one of the hard parts about drawing digitally is it's hard not to make things look a little too perfect. There's definitely some artists who really do a great job getting that like handmade quality digitally. That's not really how an eyelid would look, is it? But there I am again, trying to make it look real. <laughs> In the back of your mind, you're like, no, that's not how eye eyelid folds. <laughs> Realizing I forgot to set a timer. How do we feel about four, five minutes have it having elapsed? Does that feel about right? Since we started sure. this step, Tom? Yeah, that sounds great, Chris.
Okay, now I'm gonna pick a color for my face that's not really the color my face would be that much, but that might look interesting with the pink. So maybe A green, a slight green. So at first, when I was planning this earlier today, I thought I was going to draw one of those phrenology busts. I don't know if y'all have ever seen one of those. Yeah. yeah. But then I it was really hard for me to make it look for for it to read as as what it was. So I just went with a brain. Which is one of those things where the limitation helps something more creative come out, right? Totally. And in the last few minutes, I'm just going to label my brain. Oh, it's all coming together. Wow. Take like another three minutes. Okay. I'll share after that. I'm so excited to see what y'all did. The thing I think that's so interesting about secrets as a topic is that they're so, they have so many 
it's such a range. They can be so negative and they can be so positive. So they can be so painful and they can be so exciting. So I think that's like, I like sometimes thinking about how I can put both those things in the same comic. Oh, they can be exciting too, huh? <laughs> I would, yeah. I was just thinking of the sad ones and regrets. There's one. Yeah, there's, that's good. Sad, yeah. And some of the things I think, it, one of the things I think is interesting about a secret too, is like a secret isn't always a secret everywhere. Like you might keep a secret from a certain person. Like think about being like in high school, you know, like you would hide things from your parents that you have no problems telling. I don't know how this white outline is going to look that you might have no problem telling your best friend, but you don't, you know, you get in huge trouble if you told your parents or, you know, a secret at work, like that you're slacking off or something is not really a secret other places. And then some secrets have kind of like an expiration date. Like if, if a secret were told two years later, maybe it wouldn't matter. It's kind of interesting to think about the severity of the secret in that way, kind of one that still holds significance a long time later. Yeah. And I could probably keep labeling that brain for hours until it was unreadable. <laughs> but I would rather see, see? what y'all yeah, make. Um, so how we usually do this is um, actually, Kristen, if you can find your reactions and raise your hand, that'll sort of put you at the front of the queue. And then we'll ask anyone who wants to share to raise their Zoom hand, which is on under the reactions button. Yeah. The bottom generally. I'll do mine too. Yeah, there we go. Kristen's got it. Yeah, hers. so go ahead and raise your hand. I'd love to see what you did. And it's going to take us an extra moment to ask everybody to unmute. And uh, I'll mention in the chat and also live who who's in the queue. So I've got Kai and Walter. So I'm going to click Kai. I'm going to spotlight them. Hey, Kai, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Um. Hi. Hi, Kai. Hi. Hi. So I don't know if I can... If I, I don't know if I do the lamp, it'll, okay, that's worse. Um, so I just did, if you can see, uh, it says stage one, ask, want to hear a secret? And it's like, okay. And then um, stage two, tell my mom and the teacher are friends. And then stage three, what? And then he says, what? <laughs> stage four, I know. And I can't, I can't know if you can see. And then I reused the same joke and said, I know. Yeah. Love that. That's amazing. Thank you. I love that it's very, even though it's a diagram, it's very narrative. Like you were, you found a way to kind of combine sequential panel drawing with a diagram, which is awesome. Awesome, okay. thanks, Kai. Okay, we're gonna go to Walter. Let's see. I think Walter's gotta come on screen. Here we go. Oops. Hello, everybody. Here we go. Hi, Walter. Hi, Walter. So I did. Uh, I, I like the solar system as a diagram idea. So I did this. I think you can probably read it. Speak. Yeah, you want us to read it out loud? Uh, I can read it out loud. Yeah. Working inward in the solar system is avoidance, keeping my own counsel, speaking diplomatically, speaking candidly, and the sun is how I actually feel. That's brilliant. This, this is probably a memory of my work, but that's, that's okay. I also just want to give a shout out. These are uh, copies of Carmine Infantino pointing hands that he used to do all the time back in the cool. solar age. I mean, there's actually something about that that feels kind of like a classic newspaper comic. It's almost like an editorial cartoon or something like it, it, that. It has kind of that that same model. So it's really cool. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. You should. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We'll go to Vicky next. Thanks, Walter. Hi, everyone. Hi, Vicky. Hello. So I did a graph of this is um, I can't read it. Can somebody please read it for me? Prepare. Yes. I yeah, you, you go for it, Tom. My, sure, my, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my, I, my uh, okay. internet's worse than yours. I see, it's backwards, but I got it now. People I pretend to like, those are all the people I pretend to like. <laughs> and then this little guy saying, even me? And then I am saying, oh gosh, I can't, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, even you. Yes, okay. even you. Yes, mm -hmm. even you. All right. 
And then the next one says, um, people who are my friends. And then that little guy says, that's it. And then my character says, a healthy bunch, yes. And then the bottom one says, people I thought were my friends. And then this little guy right here says, loser. Um, a lot of back talk from these comics. And then, wait, 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 wait. And then these are uh, animals that I like, and I like all of them, but I couldn't draw them all. And then people I wish would disappear is this guy. Because what did he say down here? Oh, he said weirdo. He called me a weirdo because I like animals so much. And then I wrote people who I'd like to disappear. That guy. So just like, it's just really the critic that you want to disappear. Yes, yes exactly. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thanks, Vicky. Uh, we'll go to Nicole next. Oh, wait, I'm going to ask to unmute. There we go. And please. Hi, everyone. Hi. If I hold up an iPad, can you see it? Or yes. Is it all? Okay. So when you started talking about um, things that could be diagrams that weren't necessarily, I immediately like thought of an egg crate. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so I have this. So you kind of, if you usually if you touch the iPad and then you hold it in one spot, exactly. Okay. Then we can see it. So it says dish. And a friend recently told me that dish is my verb. It's a gleeful command, <laughs> <laughs> one that I say often. And then so every egg is like a little secret. Like ran into so our professor, stood up to your power tripping boss, the one who made you buy him socks. Blank, redacted, spent a hundred thousand on their wedding. La la la, dish. And then the next panel would be like a broken egg, and it's like this probably stems from my childhood when secrets. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it, and I love the idea of how, like, what we were talking about earlier, where like anything can turn into a diagram. Like you can label anything, and it kind of makes it more funny that it's something not traditionally associated with a secret, like an egg. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah I would have never drawn this if not for the prompt. So thank you. Awesome. I hope you do it more. Thanks, Nicole. Awesome. Um, we'll go to Nina next. Hi, Nina. Hey, am I talking? Am I there? You are. Thank you so much for this. This is great. Um, so um, I had to do a Venn diagram, and this is something from 20 plus years ago. So if anyone is, I know this is being recorded. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I guess this tests the theory of like, is it still juicy after 20 years? You'll you'll find out. Um, so here is the outer ring are uh, traveling alone, visiting schools. I'm a children's book author and illustrator, and I used to travel everywhere, visiting schools, showing books. The other outside ring is Las Vegas. And the bottom ring is ex-boyfriend who dumped me. And then uh, the inner ring, next inner rings are uh, taking a gamble a three-day weekend, rented Jaguar, and then the very center is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So you took like the cliche and, and made it interesting again, the Vegas cliche. I love it. Like it kind of centers around, it's almost like the center is like the bingo square, the free bingo square, and then everything else around it gives it context. Brilliant. Awesome, Nina. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Nina. Okay, we're going to Susan next. I don't know who's after Susan. Hey, Tom, can I share my screen? Oh, yeah, I, I'll have to change that. Hang on real fast. No, it, it, oh. you, I've got it, right? You're just asking. Uh huh. Okay, just being kind. Okay, so uh, my secret is the secret she wouldn't tell. My biological mother wouldn't adjudicate, AKA rat out my birth father. So I'm trying to find him in the DNA. Actually, my hero husband is trying to find him in the DNA. And who is my father? And I made a key, which is the yellow is what I know. And the gray is what I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I met my biological mother once and she had no children. And as of just today, my husband and uh, a genealogy angel have identified a high probability of two brothers, one of whom wow. will be my father, one of whom has four living children, and the other one has seven living children. But both of the men and my biological mother are dead as well. Wow. Well, that's an intense day. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Well, it was a great day, but I mean, talk about the secret that she wouldn't tell, yeah. right? It's a perfect prompt. So thank you so much for that, Kristen. Wow, Susan, that's awesome. 
Oh, and we've lost Kristen. Is that possible? Oh, there Thank she is. Thank you so much. That's fabulous. Sorry, I I do have a slight delay every once in a while. So if I'm quiet, I'm still here and I'm listening closely. All right. So the next then the next person in the queue, it's not in English, so I don't and it's nor is it uh so I'm not sure who it is. And if they come on video, I can bring them up, but I'll go to Cassie first and then we'll go to Lizzie if need be, and then we can figure out who we're looking at there. Oh wait, Cassie, I gotta ask you to unmute. I forgot. Oh shucks, how do I do that? Sorry. Wait, there we go. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So I was doing lots of diagrams about secrets and I was thinking about my own response to secrets. And so I ended up doing kind of a drawing uh, about how secrets make me feel. And I'm really bad at keeping secrets because when I know a secret, it just takes over my brain. It's the only thing I can think about. And so um, I tell all my secrets to my mom. That is gorgeous. Also, you really got your uh, bangs perfectly. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Cassie. Thank you. Oh, it's Umi. We're going to go to Umi now. I thought that might be Umi, but I wasn't sure. Oh, I have to ask you to unmute, Umi. There we go. Hi. So I was thinking about secrets, but I, I just think that I don't have that much secrets. Uh, I, I, it probably I means you're a really good person. <laughs> I I also don't think that I, I I bring something to someone that's gonna build intimacy so much. So mm. I did something. Uh, I I don't know if it's a correct grammar, but things that has nothing to do with when you build intimacy with me. And hopefully you don't talk about these things with me. Uh, first of all, traveling. Uh, you've been there. You've done that. I have a thought of like exotic people, and these people wore rings around their whatever i don't i don't care about that and art and music this is leaves uh, uh art and music i don't want to talk about art and music so much and the notion that your friend is my friend kind of thing oh you should like him i don't know that kind of thing i don't i don't care uh also sex you have sex with me but that's not gonna make me feel intimate with yeah and also talking about gender and sexuality. Uh, I don't know. My grandmother is a lesbian. My parents are like transgender. So I don't care at, at this point. And <laughs> alcohol and drug, that's not going to bring any intimacy with me. So, but I don't think, because I'm able to talk about these things. A lot of people think like, oh, Umi likes to talk about these things. But no, I can talk about these things. But, you know, doesn't mean that I love talking about these things. So that's my secret, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, complicated. Well, my next assignment for you is to try to tell a secret and see how it feels. Awesome. Just try. Just go ahead and try. <laughs> maybe you'll get it. Maybe you'll get hooked. I <laughs> get hooked. <laughs> Thanks, Umi. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you, Umi. Right, I right. love your sweater also, Umi. Amazing. All right, going to Lizzie next. I also have trouble with uh, secrets. So I decided to do lies. So I did a liogram. Cool. It's a car. Uh, it's uh, times I lied about what I was returning at Lowe's. <laughs> times I wasn't lying, but I felt like I was lying. Uh, times I lied in order to surprise people. Good, uh, Times I lied about having cash. I feel like that's a <laughs> terrible lie. Uh, times I lied about what I was thinking about. Times I lied about what I was feeling. Fabulous. The liogram. That's pretty amazing. Wow. Awesome, Lizzie. Thank you. Um, let's see. Going to go to Jackie next and then Michael and then Michael. Can you unmute, Jackie? There we go. Oops. Um, oh, I think, wait, wait. I think I might have to ask you to unmute again. Double. There, there we, go. we go. So I did, I did a flow chart and it kind of got out of hand. Um, it, up to your secret. I mean, there's like so many things going on here and I just, colored in the things that were conclusions. I can give you a few examples like uh, 
you know, is it embarrassing? Yes. No, no. And then it is, are you sure it's a secret? And yes. Does it relate to my alcoholism? Yes. No. Yes. Can it be used for creative fodder? Yes. Do it. No. Use it to help someone else. And like, you know, things, was it age appropriate? Did it have to do with sex? And did it be something that you feel bad if you executed it? Uh, did it make you feel special? And basically, the endpoints are you sure it's a secret, take it easy on yourself, get over it, maybe for therapy, cringy, but you'll live, and shame on you. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think <laughs> we have enough time for me to get, quite get into everything, but uh, there you go. Thank you. Wow. That was so great, Mike. I'm, I'm going to stop my camera for a minute. Maybe I will be able to have better internet, but I love the way that uh, it's as complex as secrets become. It's incredible. Oh yeah, Susan said that in the chat. I completely agree. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. Um, we're asking Michael. All right, there we go. Hi, Michael. Hi, hi, hi Kristen. It's, it's thanks so great all, to see you. Well, thanks for all your encouragement for the last year and a half. Uh, anyway, yeah. when I was when I saw your drawing of your, the brain, it made me think of a map. So I literally thought of drawing a map of California, fabulous, and using it as a way of pointing out either some of my secrets or other things that are not my secrets, but things that people don't know. So, for example, Incredible. up at the top, up at the top is the site of the largest battle between the U.S. Army and Native Americans in California history up cool. near Thule Lake. And then um, down by the coast, um, I was recently in Benicia where I, I used to have a boss who told me that there was terrible smell from the standard oil refineries, but I'd never been to the town before. And I went there to try to find the odors and I couldn't. Anyway, so that's, there's a drawing of, uh, of uh, ref the refinery up there. And then um, <laughs> further, further down the coast is a place people should go visit, but a lot of people don't know about it. It's an elephant seal rookery where baby elephant seals are, uh, well, well the, the, the elephant seals show up at a certain time of year. It's near Hearst Castle. It's really wonderful. Um, in the middle of the state, there's an icon of a, of a car battery because that's where my electric car almost ran out of electricity about 12 miles south of Koalinga. So oh, uh, that's, that's an important landmark to me. And uh, a little further down near where I grew up in LA, uh, there's a, 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 a that I, I tried to, to draw the scales of justice because when I was a teenager, right after I got my mm. license, I was summoned to the juvenile court for having three moving violations in my first month of having a driver's license. And so my mother had to <laughs> court. And the other thing on, on the right-hand side is uh, my secret. I used to live in Sacramento, in downtown Sacramento, in an apartment that was infested with cockroaches. So anyway, this was a great reason oh. to get me to draw cockroaches and elephant seals and refinery towers that I've never tried before. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. I love that it's like a combination of secret and then also like hidden histories. That's so, so great because so, so many things hidden in that way do become a kind of secret. Right, thank you. Awesome, thank you, Michael. We're going to the other Michael again. Let's see, replace. Michael Ashner, do you want me to read? This is how we've been doing it or, or do you wanna read? Me. <laughs> okay. Kristen, I'm going to read for Michael. Yeah, that'd be great if you don't mind. All right. Um, okay. So it's a Venn diagram deconstructing secrets. On one circle, we have social masking. Another circle, we have protection. Bottom circle, we have deflection. Over, I don't know how to read it, how to describe a Venn diagram, but we'll try it. So overlapping social masking and deflection is guilt overlapping protection. Oops, there we go. And 
deflection is humiliation, overlapping social masking and protection is shame, overlapping all of them or underlapping or overlapping is vulnerability. And we have two characters on the bottom, one exclaiming to the to the heavens and the other sort of oh exclaiming to the guilt one is guilt and the other is humiliation oh <laughs> awesome i'll let Kristen carry this on. is amazing this is gorgeous i also really love the palette i mean like the in the the center being black of the venn diagram is so smart it's like you're like disrupting the rules of how color overlaps to mm -hmm. for like added effect it's perfect awesome thanks michael We'll go to Kate next and then Chris and then Sally. Let's see. Um, hi. hi. So my secret is that um, I am jealous of my friend and I feel protective of my art. I don't want him to start doing this and be better than me. And so this is me. And I also feel really bad about this jealousy because he's my friend. <laughs> so, and then I tried to do a diagram, but I don't think I understand how a graph works. So it's okay. It, I don't either. <laughs> it was kind of like, so when I'm feeling good about myself, it's less. And then when I'm sure. feeling bad about myself, it's more, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to work on the diagram. <laughs> but it's um it's it's it really hits because so much about so many of the, so much of the reasons that we keep secrets or we hold things to ourselves is because we feel shame, which is so much about a part big part of jealousy or or kind of like your reaction to feeling jealousy. It yeah. works really well. You you're getting a lot of related people relating to it in in the chat, Kate. So you can go oh, check out. <laughs> I'm not the only one jealous of my friend. Okay. No. No. <laughs> Thanks. We'll go to Chris next. I Hi, like the Lizzie. Hi, I like Lizzie Tricky's um, car because during the warm up exercise, I drew a picture of a fly and just started using random. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's something about that that's kind of liberating. But my um, my comic is relatively simple. Um, my secret mission in life is to keep knives out of the dishwasher, and so wow, here's the a good mission. Here's the knife drawer. And uh, here's me chopping some stuff and trying, and uh, I'm thinking to myself, I have to remember to wash the knife and put it away before Kim cleans up. Cause I do the cooking, but my wife uh, cleans up and then I always fail. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very wholesome <laughs> secret. I really appreciate it. Just happy and then sad. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> anyway. Thanks very much. It was a really great exercise. <laughs> I'm so glad. I love what you did. Thank you, Chris. Awesome, Chris. Thanks. We'll go to Sally next and then Mia. I had a long time uh, trying to sort of get my mind around this. Uh, ah, oh. So nice like, if you touch the screen, it sort of helps. Oh. I don't know why. No, I didn't. Oh. No. Shoot. Well, or if you yeah, get I'll it, you know what? You should yeah, you can also if you hold it in front of the door, I think the door the backlighting from the door behind you is mm. is making oh. it. So if you just there you go. Ah, Ooh. thank you. Yeah, sort of. Oh well, anyway, it's just a picture of my <laughs> that's not working. Just a picture of my um pencil case with all kinds of pens in it. And it just says the pencil case represents a secret and all the pens in it are named and it says all the people bound by the secret, whether they know it or not. Mm. Mm, we'll brilliant I'll post it somewhere else <laughs> I'd love you. to see it thank you thanks Sally awesome Sally thanks so much so we've got Mia Marlene Susanna oops did I ask I need to ask you to to um unmute oh, oh I see look at chat box first got it hi I'm a first timer here I'm a newbie at drawing cartoons so bear with me I did a diagram using a hand Pencils only, no cool. lines or colors. My not so secret, while hearing people have been coming up with ridiculous names to diagnose us, such as deaf and dumb, hearing impaired, mute, and so much more, many people don't realize that the deaf community actually have names for y'all too. Oh, this is going to be good. Yes. In case it's hard to read, each finger, each finger outlines the following quote, deers in headlight. Signing impaired, hearing, blah blahers, 
them, there's that. I got zines about the real history of deaf community that was not in your standard history textbooks. So there's definitely more secret diagrams coming up. Thanks, Kristen. Right. First of all, I can't believe that you're new to this because that is a gorgeous drawing of a hand and hands are really notoriously, famously difficult to draw. So please come back. Uh, I hope to see you next week. I'm sure everyone does. And I am from now on going to call myself a blah blah because that is pretty great. <laughs> I, I think that's all I do half the time is just blah blah. <laughs> so thank you so, so much, Mia. Uh, so awesome. Okay, we'll go to Marlene next. Um, oops, hang on, Marlene, I'm getting you there. And you have to unmute, Marlene. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm starting at the bottom. I've reversed my, my train of thought to starting at the bottom this time with my frames. And uh, my secret. Oh, she's muted again. Hang on, Marlene. You got yourself muted again. I don't know why. There you go. Is is that okay? Yep. Now it's good again. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I've got a couple, uh, and their names are Bertha and Tom, married for fifty years, and they've got a few secrets to tell one another. The format of my um, chart are arrows, as you can see. And so Bertha starts off to say to Tom. Start narrator dialogue. Okay. Uh, Bert, uh, exiting narrator. Sorry, um, I don't know what's going on. My computer's playing up. Um, Bertha says to, to Tom, I, I've always worried about my knock knees and my wrinkles. So you can see her wrinkles um, on her face. And <laughs> <laughs> he says to her, um really bertha um i i've always loved your legs and your lovely sense of humor and that's him over there and so then she reveals a secret to him with a mobile phone in her hand saying to him well love i'm sorry but i got a message from the genealogical web telling me that i've got siblings and so he puts his, his hand on her shoulder and assures her it's all okay. And she says to him, do you mind? And he nonchalantly says to her, no, I don't. Our family's expanding. So um, he's quite happy with the family getting a bit bigger with the extra siblings. And uh, it just shows you in a marriage it doesn't matter how long you have been married. There's always some little secret that will come out. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Those caricatures were fabulous. They were so well developed for such a short amount of time. I'm so impressed. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Marlene. And we'll go to Thank Susanna. You, Tom. Sure, Susanna next, and then Selena and Brett, and then Cheryl. Here's Susanna. You have to unmute. Hi, Susanna. Great to see you. Hi, great, great to be back um, doing a workshop with you. So um, excited to be able to take another class with you. I yeah. really love your book. <laughs> um, it was one of my Thank favorites. you. That's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Could somebody please read this? Because I also have trouble reading things backwards. And the, the I, I can do it. Should I start? Let's see. What? Uh, what I do at the, uh, I thought it said gene donor, but I think it says governor's mansion holiday party. <laughs> According to my, um, uh, something or other carbon dioxide meter, it must be a brand. The ventilation in the governor's mansion is so bad that everyone here should be wearing N95 masks, not just me. What everyone else does at the governor's mansion holiday party. And there they are. I see them all down there at the. Those are all the figures of them. Is there another page, Susanna? I love it. Amazing, amazing color. <laughs> Thanks. I, I know I need to kind of clarify it 
to mm-hmm. show that everybody else is like partying without masks and that I'm the dork in the corner with the CO2 meter. I um, feel like you're, com- you're communicating it pretty well, but you could also draw like big grotesque kind of mouths on them that like even come off the shape of the face, you know, like the mouth is even bigger than their face or their heads could just be mouths. Oh, wow. I could even draw a little like, like virus thing. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've got your marching orders. Thanks, yeah. Susanna. <laughs> Thanks, well, Susanna. Selena and Brett next. Let me ask them to unmute and place spotlight. Hey, uh, this is Brett. So Hi, I- Brett. Yeah. So like the way that I thought about it, it's called keeping secrets from myself. And the way that I did is like, I try to make like lines and then I don't know what's on the other side. And then there's like the ups and downs. And then like, um, this says point of no return. And here's like a angry dark cloud. And here's like a, a line that got broken because like, I don't like, I'm feeling something, but I don't really know what it is. And I'm trying to like reach myself. And then up here is like a key or like a glossary of things. Like I wrote constipated crying, like when you want to cry, but you can't cry. So <laughs> The inspiration was like, you know, like Candyland, like board game, trying to make a Perfect, board game. Yeah. And like also like the weather map when the weatherman's showing you like the different temperatures and stuff. But yeah. really it just looks like, uh, you know, like um, just uh, maybe a regular map or topography or something. So that's it. A board game is a is a great idea. I never thought about that as a diagram, but that's a that's a that's an excellent example of a diagram. Thanks, Brett. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. We'll go to Cheryl next. There's Cheryl. Hang on. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, I got to ask to unmute. It takes a second. There we go. Okay. I did it on my iPad and then I moved it to my phone and then I got to figure out how to open it. There uh, we go. Um, so I, I did like good secrets and bad secrets. Love it. And I started uh, with like the charts that have like the double, um, but then I kind of liked it in the pie chart better maybe. So good secrets are like presents. Bad secrets are regifting. Um, good <laughs> secrets are inside jokes. Bad <laughs> secrets are gossip. Good secrets are family recipes. Bad secrets are online recipes behind a paywall. Oh. Good secrets are passwords. The worst secret is our passwords I can't remember. <laughs> That's amazing. I love also that the pie chart is 50-50, that half of the secrets in your life are good and bad. That feels like a good balance. Like you're doing something right if it's a solid 50-50. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. It's also very funny. Awesome, Cheryl. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to uh, see me next if she's there. Let's see. Um, maybe. Hello. Ah, there we go. Hang on. Let's see. Oh, I love no, your glasses. Kind of- Oh, thank you. It's kind of dark. Um, I drew really lightly. Now I'm seeing. Um, If you put it kind of close to the camera, we'll probably be able to see it. Yeah. Okay. So it starts here. It's like a board game slash map. And it's titled, So You Want to Share Your Feelings. And feelings is very tiny. Um, And start here, Deep Thoughts. And then there's a stop sign that says either go or either go back or keep going, eat your feelings Mm. or say it loud. Oh my gosh. Mm. Um, And then hop aboard the local train and then you travel and then you fall into the water. JK, it's saying the secret (laughs) or your thoughts. Um, And then this is when you feel like sharing you enter a yummy, yummy monster. Uh, oh gosh. Um, and then the yummy, yummy hoops, monster hoops you out. Um, and then there's another stop sign that says, think about what you want to say. Um, and then there's another like lips that say, say it anyway. And then there's the final train destination is when I share. And then there's a bang at the end because you crash trying to share your feelings um, <laughs> there's like there's a lot of infrastructure in these secrets i love this there's like monsters there's the rail line it's incredible thank you thanks so much thanks Simi. um i think we'll go to carol i think we're we think we've got two more carol and then jamie if jamie's here um and i have to, sorry i have to ask carol to unmute 
There we go. So I was working on this Venn diagram today on my oh. iPad, because I think in Venn diagrams. And I was trying to figure out how the people, the different voices that are my in my memoir as me relate mm -hmm. to each other in the most direct way. So I did that this today. And then I realized I'd left out a really important part that's what in of that one that I worked on today. So I did another one today while well, during this <laughs> class. And and it really helped me because um because I wasn't trying to be fancy or anything. I was just writing stuff yeah. down and trying to make the code like, okay, I'm all these things. I'm these three stage fright and Melissa and Caddis that are my that stand for me and my memoir and how they all relate. And it really helped me. I'm just so surprised. So I'm so you. glad. Also, like you are a psychic or something that you were making bent diagrams today before coming to this class. <laughs> oh, no, I've made my whole book makes my whole book is Venn diagrams because my Amazing. whole life has been about comparing how things are the same and different. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm excited for your book of Venn diagrams. Thank you. Um, thanks, Carol. I'm looking for Jamie Scandal if she's there. Otherwise, we'll. Um, I saw her. I heard I her. did too. Yeah. Jamie, you have to uh, raise your Zoom hand. Kristen, we, we have the semi ritual of, of finishing with Jamie if Jamie's here, but. Cool. We never, oh, hang on. There's Jamie. Jamie, you got one for us? God, I'm bright red. It's terrifying. All right, look, it's only pencil <laughs> because I only have like 10 minutes to do it. And I really don't want to share because I don't want people to know the ugly truth. But so here, here's the big secret. So there's me as the thinker. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm thinking about... Uh, summer and how bad it is when you're at the beach because like okay the, the okay the secret is that I have messed up feet it's hereditary I can't help it I hide it in my shoes my Herman the Monster shoes or my Doc Martens or whatever so I'm worried about it like it's snowing it's fine when it's snowing but if it's beach time then what <laughs> you do because you're going to the beach and now you got to wear Doc Martens at the beach and everyone's going to be like what is she hiding <laughs> so it's snowing on me and that's because it's the cold hard truth oh like would anybody think I'm actually cool if they knew about my messed up feet so then the fantasy is that I would have the feet like uh in a Quentin Tarantino movie and the reality is that <laughs> that's all I got incredible <laughs> I love it perfect ending now all right. Thank you all so much. This was so fun. Uh, please do tag me on Instagram and I would love to reshare all of your comics that you made. This was amazing. This was, this was great. Give us one second to unmute everybody so that we can say thank you out loud, Kristen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look what you started. Oh, yeah. Amazing. What a... Thanks, Kristen. You're going to get your book. Legacy. Thank you for starting me. <laughs> Thank you. Can't wait to watch it again. I want to say, yeah, is Mia still here? Too late. Right. Did I lose Mia? I wanted to make a note for Mia. Oh, she's gone. Thank you, Mia. Okay. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Oh, Molly Rose. Molly oh. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, she splits. Aww. Yeah. <laughs>